My grandma is my biggest inspiration in cooking, and these burgers are straight from her kitchen. Okay. She always made these really thin burgers. She's from Logan County, West Virginia. That's why I call them Logan County Burgers. And they didn't have a lot of money, so they wanted to stretch their meat. So one pound of meat. So you didn't put out a lot of money to make this lunch for me today. <laughs> no. You're going cheap on me. All right. I'm going real cheap on you. All right. So they're really thin burgers. A pound of meat, you get about six to eight burgers. And then you make it kind of like a grilled cheese. So it's white bread with lots of butter, American cheese, and ground beef. We should probably start because that'll become yeah. self-evident, right? Let's get started. Okay. So right. I picked up a pound of ground chuck. This is ground chuck. You're not using ground, ground sirloin. You're not. If you're putting a bunch of butter and melted cheese, there's no point in skimping on the fat in this. So I like to really season the meat. So I do about a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And about a half teaspoon of pepper. Okay. And then just a pinch of garlic powder. Now just want to, so garlic powder. Now a lot of cooks would feel that was like below them, garlic powder. Why are you okay with it in these? I really like garlic powder. I actually use it a lot in my cooking. It won't be raw and you won't get a big bite of garlic. It's just kind of a subtle hint in okay. the back. Okay, so some onion. Now, what, now while you're doing this, Kate, I, I myself am a bad enough cook that I would not be able to kind of chat about something else and, and food prepare at the same time, but I, I think you're a little bit more skilled than I am. Um, these burgers actually brought you a measure of fame, did they not? They did. The Burger Bash here in New York, I won with these burgers. You know, I didn't ever think in a million years that entering that contest that I would win. It was crazy. People really liked these silly little burgers. How often do you actually, I mean, is this something if you're home alone or just having a friend over, is this something you'll make? I get requests for these a lot from my friends. Okay. So I do make them quite a bit. Does that mean you're kind of sick of this? Is this like us asking Fleetwood Mac to do Don't Stop one more time? <laughs> I'd never get tired of okay. these burgers. I love them. Maybe because it's my version of comfort food. It takes me back to being in her kitchen. So it's kind of like if you were making meatloaf, I was going to say, as I'm watching you do this, I always think when I make meatloaf, it's like the it's the adult play doh. Uh, <laughs> <of cooking. laughs> and you're having that same sort of fun with this because you're not doing just a simple beef patty. You're actually exactly, kind of putting stuff in. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to make these into some thin patties. Just takes a little bit of meat. Not much meat at all. This is really thin. This is like White Castle comes to Greenwich Village, you know? Yeah. <laughs> White Castle in Greenwich Village, yeah. When did you begin adding garlic powder and onion and what led you to that? Was it was it the kind Actually, of meatloaf analogy? Meatloaf. Or, yeah. meatloaf led me to it. I love to make meatloaf. I call meatloaf manloaf because if you make it for a man, he'll fall in love with you. Has it worked out that way for you? <laughs> it has. How many men have fallen in love with you through your meatloaf? <laughs> I don't know. This That's is a good the PG question. 13 portion of our program. <laughs> the manloaf. I don't know, Frank. Maybe I'll have to make it for you and then maybe that's, you'll that's fall a, in love. That's a tall hill to <laughs> scale. Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. So the meatloaf was what inspired the onions and the garlic powder. White bread is the cradle white for this bread. for this astonishing meat, right? <laughs> yes. No, I mean, I like, the, I like the consistency here. We've got white bread, I believe, not to get too far ahead of the action, and, and, and spoiler alert, I believe that uh, we're going to be doing yellow American cheese. Yellow American cheese. So we've cheese. got garlic powder, mm -hmm. yellow American cheese, white bread. Lots of Katie butter. Katie Lee is a cook without airs. <laughs> Onto the griddle. Onto the griddle. That's a scary amount of smoke coming off of that griddle. I know. It looks really hot, doesn't it? Yeah, be careful. But a hot griddle's good. Then your meat won't stick. I love mm, that sound. I love that sound. Yeah, just, oh my gosh. Okay, so now so these, are so, these are so thin. Are you going to keep them on there just like a nanosecond, or how long are they going to be there? They're on about a minute each side. And okay. That's it. If even. I just kind of watch it, and I can kind of tell. You want to lift them up a little bit with a spatula, and when they start to brown, that's when it's time to flip it. It's getting these, smoky in this here. This smells like beef fat, you know, smoking up, and, you know, <laughs> next to Chanel number no. 9, I think it's one of the world's <laughs> great sense. I think it's better than Chanel number no. 9. Yeah, I do too, but I'm being discreet for, the, <laughs> for our home audience. There we go. See how nice and brown yeah. those look? I love that. They cook up so fast. And your know, kids always really like these too. I have a lot of friends whose kids love these burgers. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. Okay. And now we can build the burger, glorified grilled cheese, patty melt, whatever you wanna call right. it. Nomenclature does not concern us now, <laughs> but call them whatever yellow you want. American and buttered white bread do concern us. Yeah, buttered side down. Okay. And then a slice of yellow American. I think it's important to use the yellow American because then you get a little bit of color. Okay, so easy as that, just like building a grilled cheese. So it gets swaddled in its, in its yellow mm -hmm. American. Mm. So you want the heat on medium, medium, low. 
That way the bread so you don't won't have get just too burnt. Kind of bread. Mm -hmm. And if it cooks too fast, then by the the bread will be done before, before the, cheese the cheese is melted. Yeah. And then I just kind of keep an eye on these. Oh, they're that's already, already starting to brown. You just want the bread to brown nicely like you're making a grilled cheese sandwich. This looks really good and that's where all that good butter comes into play because it'll give right. you that good color. And I mean most people know how to make a grilled cheese. So it's the same principles. All right, these are done. All right. Do you, so we'll just oh. slap them down here. Mm, don't these look good? They do. All right, I'm going straight for the mayo and a little ketchup. We've talked about uh, what one might serve alongside these, um, the appropriateness of a milkshake. I always say a food is judged by its flexibility. If I wanted to pair this with a wine, what would you recommend? Maybe something like Boone's Farm. Like Boone's Farm? <laughs> but while we have someone go out to the store to get that, I think um, in conclusion I'd like to say to you, may I please have another half? You may. Thank you. Smile.